one of my favorite things to do is convince recent college grads to apply for a Fulbright Research Award instead of a Fulbright English Teaching Award. I often hear from people, but I don't have any research experience or I don't know what I should research. Here's the thing, if you have a few months to work on an application, you can totally come up with an interesting idea for a research award. In this video, I'm gonna define what kind of research or projects are eligible for a Fulbright, even if you have zero research experience, and I'll talk about the benefits of doing a research award for your career. One of the biggest misconceptions is that people think that they have to be in grad school or have a lot of research experience to apply for the research award. I received the Fulbright Research Award to do public health work. My undergrad degree was in architecture. I could barely write a 10 page paper for a class and I had zero public health experience, but I was still able to put together a strong research proposal with the guidance of a former Fulbrighter. I wanna start by making research less intimidating by reframing this word research. Traditionally, we think of research as something that is happening in a lab with a controlled study or where there's all these methods put together where we're following strict protocols, but really research is really an investigation. It's a study. I will study, I will explore, I will look at X, Y, and Z. So many things can count as research. There are a diversity of research methods. Some of them are lighter touch, some of them are heavier duty. You know, the most basic type of research is really just interviews and surveys, but from there, there's so much more you can do that you can call research. Most research starts out with a research question. I want to explore X and its impact on Y, something like that. And then you go about figuring out what's the best method for you to explore that topic. Is it doing interviews? Is it doing surveys? Maybe it's drawing and mapping. There's so many different ways you can do research. The Fulbright Research Award also supports creative art projects or general projects. Like say there's a project you wanna take on in a local community, they will support that kind of work. So let me give you a few examples. There was a Fulbrighter who went to Taiwan to study indigenous weaving. She spent a semester at a university taking classes in art. And then she spent another couple of months working in an indigenous community, learning their weaving techniques. She wasn't doing research per se, but she was fulfilling the mission of the Fulbright, which is cultural exchange and mutual understanding between cultures. So she was learning about these techniques of artwork and that was her form of research. I also met a woman who was a dancer and she went to India to study a particular form of dance. There was even a woman I read about who went to Brazil and joined a circus. Like really, there are so many cool things you can do on a Fulbright. There was a student I worked with that got a Fulbright to go to Ghana and work with a museum on photography curation of a famous photographer. Like there really are so many cool things you can do with a Fulbright. One way I like to think about research is an exploration. What do you want to explore? For me, I was really interested in exploring the impacts of the built environment on public health in the favelas of Rio, Brazil. I found this nonprofit organization that was doing some really interesting work in the favelas. And I asked if I could join them as part of my Fulbright research. And I called my research participant observation, which is a valid form of research where I learned by doing. I joined their organization. I was embedded like a staff member and I participated in many of the community projects that they did. And I learned their methods of community engagement by seeing them being done. Another part of my research was doing a small evaluation. I had no experience doing an evaluation of anything in my life before, but I just did a lot of reading. You know, you can go to your library and pick up books on how to do interview surveys, those kinds of things. And I just structured my proposal into something that seemed feasible for me. But what I wanna leave you with is that you can figure out how to put together a research proposal. In a future video, I'm gonna go into more detail on research methods and developing a research question for the Fulbright. Another reason I encourage people to apply for the Fulbright Research Award is that the process of coming up with a research proposal idea can be very valuable to helping clarify your career goals. When I graduated undergrad, I thought I would go on to get a master's in architecture, but I didn't really know what I wanted for my career. It just seemed like the next step I should take. However, when I was working on my Fulbright proposal, I started learning a lot about public health and how our cities impact our health. I was doing a lot of reading about that topic because I had never done it professionally or in classes even. 
and I started seeing a lot of things click between where I grew up and my own health. As I was learning more about these connections between communities and health, I discovered that there are these dual master's programs in city planning and public health. And over those months of putting together my Fulbright proposal, I actually taught myself a lot about public health and realized I wanted to go into a career by doing a dual master's in city planning and public health. One of the big benefits of doing a Fulbright Research Award is that it really is something that looks really tremendous on your resume and something you can talk about when you're applying to jobs or applying to grad school. When you're doing a Fulbright Research Award, you are doing independent research, meaning that like you put together the idea, you had to find the people to work with, and that shows that you are a self-starter. You're someone who can get shit done. Like you're someone who can go after things. And it's really impressive to people who are hiring or in grad school. If you've read my statement of purpose for grad school, you see that I talk about my Fulbright experience in that essay. So even though I didn't have public health or city planning experience, my Fulbright experience was the relevant experience that helped me get into grad school. Additionally, when I'm applying for jobs, people always ask about my Fulbright experience. I once did an interview for a job and the person admitted to me that they had already made an offer for the job, but they found my resume so interesting and they had never met anyone who'd done a Fulbright and they wanted to meet with me and talk with me and ask me if I would be available to do some consulting with them since they had already hired someone for the job I was applying for. So the Fulbright is something really impressive that does help expand your career opportunities. One reason I recommend the Research Study Award over the ETA Award is that with the Research Award, you have more flexibility to define what it is you want to do. If you are someone who wants to go into international education or teaching English, the ETA is a great, perfect award for you. But if you have interests outside of teaching English, there are ways you can put together an application to make you a strong candidate to explore a topic that might be more relevant to something you want to do in your career. With the research award, you have total flexibility to propose what you want to do and where you want to do it. Everything is on your schedule and there's no one watching over you, checking in to see what you're doing every day. With the Fulbright ETA award, you are assigned to teach English at a school. You can be assigned to a big city or more often a rural location. You might be teaching elementary school kids or university students and the range of experiences can really differ. Most people are gonna have a great ETA experience, but sometimes you hear from people who have an environment that's challenging, where they're maybe commuting on the bus for a few hours each day to get to their teaching location, and they feel really busy with the teaching and they, they don't get as much time to work on their personal projects and things like that. But with the Research Award, you can really tailor your experience to exactly what you wanna do and what's gonna be a great stepping stone to your future career. Even if you are someone interested in international education, you can also apply for a Fulbright Research Award and research something related to education. For example, I worked with someone who was a teacher and they applied for the Fulbright to go to Germany and study a really unique model of education that Germany has for students who are immigrants and refugees that produces really great outcomes for those students. She wanted to study that model and see how can a similar model be in her teaching methods or working with uh, an immigrant population in the United States. So there are lots of ways you can turn an interest in education into a research award and do something that might be better aligned for your career interests. In future videos, I'll go into more detail on how to come up with a research question and research methods for non-researchers. But what I wanna leave you with is not being intimidated by the Fulbright Research Award. It truly is a phenomenal opportunity for your career. You can sign up for my newsletter for more tips on applying to the Fulbright Award.